Good morning. My name is Scott DeBlay. I'm a senior product consultant in the Dell Storage Product Group. I'm going to spend about 10 minutes with you going through. I thought it'd be fun to level set on just what is in the Dell Storage portfolio all the way across. Um, is it's you know lots of di different pieces we have to put together, and then I'm going to quickly turn it over to uh, my cohorts uh, Kishore and John. They're going to talk about specifically uh, fluid cache for SAN and our flash and what we're doing with flash. What for you? So when we look at storage, we look at what's going on in the world of storage right now, we kind of put it in the two different buckets, if you will. There's the evolving what has currently been in market for some time, if you will. It's kind of the, the if you go back to um, John's slide, or excuse me, Matt's slide this morning, we was talking about those different waves, you know, the virtualization wave and those types of things. So the evolution is certainly what we've done with storage for a long time, external SANs and those types of things, but new stuff being added to those, whether that's bringing in server-side storage integration, like we'll talk about with fluid cache for SAN, whether that's continuing the involvement of the external SAN arena, um, bringing in appliances that are more, uh, you know, easier to set up in that kind of phase, and a certainly converged solution. So we call that kind of the evolution side. The revolutionary side is a little bit of the software-defined world. This is the whole software-defined data center, how things are still changing and forming and stratifying and all those different things. So we kind of break it down to those two worlds. The Dell architecture, again, as Matt was mentioning, we used to OEM other people's products. And uh, starting back in the mid-2000s, we started acquiring companies and building up our own IP stack. So started with uh, Equalogic and a number of different companies, and really the story behind here is we've been on this integration path for a while. So if you take a company like Ocarina, which isn't a company you probably remember from a name standpoint anymore, and some of you do. Um, we, they want. <laughs> exactly. So, so great product. We've integrated their compression and dedupe into our, our file system, what we call the fluid file system. We took the compression functionality and we put it into the block storage arrays. RNA networks is actually what fluid cache or SAN is based on. So we've been on this integration path and we continue to, within our IP stack and the things we have, continue to integrate and bring essentially those products together. The benefits of those, of course, is that we get to the point where we have a unified architecture from top to bottom. It accelerates not only the ability for us to bring product to the market, but to simplify what our customers are looking at and, and, and a lot of great benefits associated with that. Some of those benefits are things that we've done very recently. As an example, we brought in a new, what's called the SC4020, a new product into the compellent line, which we call the SC line. Uh, we brought in, uh, in fact, John will mention this, so I won't steal too much of his thunder, but we have a new flash array, an all-flash array at a very aggressive street price. Um, continuing on with uh, Equalogic, we just brought in a new 4210, and we have a partnership with Nutanix where we brought in a, a hyper-converged solution into that. So we've got, got a lot of innovation and a lot of functionality we've been bringing into the market very quickly. Sorry, just is... With the Nutanix partnership, mm -hmm. uh, your Evo Rail, is that part of the storage business unit or somewhere else within Dell? It's, it's part of Dell, certainly, right? Technically, uh, Nutanix is part of the storage business and Evil Rail is part of the server business, but it's all part of the hyper-converged strategy that we have across Dell. Okay. Great question. Is Dell's hyper-converged strategy Nutanix and or Evil Rail, or is there another portion of it that is a hyper-converged strategy that's pure play Dell using all the Dell solutions? So today it's Nutanix and Evil Rail. Okay. Um, and as you know, that world is changing quickly. Um, so we want to make sure we have products that fit for the, what customers are asking us to Absolutely. do, and we'll see how that market unfolds. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Quick view, this is what the Dell storage portfolio looks like today. There's SC, PS, MD. The point I want to make on this, a lot of you are familiar with names like Equalogic and Compellent, great names in the industry, certainly. As we move forward, we want to make sure we're known as Dell Storage. Right, so, so SC is what Compellent was historically. The product was always called SC, or Storage Center. PS is Peer Scaling, which is what Ecologic is always called. Uh, Power Vault MD, again, always called that. So you're going to see the names be brought out as SC, PS, MD as we bring products forward under this Dell storage umbrella, which makes a lot of sense for us because we are integrating all these things together. And then ML and TL, of course, the type libraries, the data reduction functionality we have, and then the software-defined storage, and I'll touch on those very quickly. So again, not stealing John's thunder, I want to kind of do a setup for what you're going to see for the rest of the, the hour we have here on storage. John's going to talk a lot about Flash, what we're doing in Flash, certainly what the industry is doing with Flash. Flash, as everybody knows, is really changing what storage has done, how storage arrays are architected, how IO paths take place, all those things. It's, you know, it's the tidal wave, if you will, of change. So John will touch on all those things. 
and then Kishore is going to talk about what we're doing with fluid cache for SAN, which is pretty cool. Really taking the, the array, bringing it all the way up into the host, but not losing the family values of why you bought the storage array in the first place, or the benefits of the storage array. So the rest of the presentation, we'll get into those two pieces really quick. You saw this this morning in Matt's slide. Mine has a little bit of background color to it as opposed to the white background color. But the point being is, you know, there's these waves that always occur in the industry that, that cause a, a field of change, if you will. And we believe we're still in this virtualization wave. Huge wave, hasn't crusted yet. We still know that, you know, a lot of customers are now 60%, 70% virtualized, but not 100% the way there. We're still evolving the platforms that support virtualization absolutely all the way through, whether that's in the storage array, integration in the host, all these things are changing a lot. Hyperconverged is certainly a wave in this virtualization, but there's this kind of next little wave coming and it's probably going to turn into a really big wave, this whole software defined whatever. Software defined data center, storage, etc. So in a touch on that, we look at the SDS space today in kind of two buckets. There's the pure software player, the software only solutions, and then there's the hyper-converged. Obviously similar in the discussion when they get thrown into the big bucket of SDS, but clearly addressing two different needs, right? Hyper-converged is the all-in-one, I run a VM on the box and I'm good, right? Very different than the storage approach, which is I'm essentially building a storage array, but a little bit different than the traditional methodology of building storage arrays. And what we really feel today there isn't one size that fits all when it comes to either what we're doing with traditional arrays, and I hate that term, but you know, the, the, the standard stuff we've been doing for a while and the evolution of those things and where SDS is going. So our approach really is to partner with our partners we've had for a long time and new ones to bring best of breed solutions to our customers because we're getting asked to supply all of these. So certainly from a SDS point of view, we have a relationship, like I mentioned, with Nutanix, where we sell their hyper-converged solution. We certainly do Evo Rail on the hyper-converged as well. But we also have relationships with Nexenta for, for large-scale NAS functionality. We are integrating into Ceph and OpenStack, both on our storage platforms and into other places as well. Windows Storage Spaces, Microsoft vSAN, all these we have solutions for. We have vetted configuration where we've tested this and qualified this. In some cases, we actually bring some IP functionality into those stacks, like Microsoft Storage Spaces. We've done some work there, so you can see some of the details of the, of the uh, JBODs and disk drives behind them, that type of stuff. So it's really that we want to bring all these functionality together for you and, and have customers select yet. what they like. Go back to that slide for one second. Yeah, please. <laughs> the, um, I couldn't Is escape with a question. That those are all SDS solutions, or the Dell portfolio helps these, some of these non-SDS solutions become SDS solutions. So like Evo Rail, that's technically an SDS. It falls within the constraints of what defines an SDS. Mm -hmm. uh, vSAN technically is an element of Evo Rail and helps to drive the SDS strategy, but not necessarily everything on there is an SDS and would need Correct. over overbearing components and parts of a portfolio to sure. actually get there. Sure. That's why I'm asking, is it intended to say everything on there is an SDS or we help to make these things become an SDS solution? I think, I think it's intended to say there's two components of SDS. There's the hyper-converged SDS, because I think SDS is trying to encompass all these things in the one bring a big umbrella. There isn't kind of a clear what is SDS. No, they actually right? have a clear so, what is SDS, but we can well, get past that. We'll okay, past we'll, that. we'll move back. So, so hyper-converged platforms, Nutanix, Evo Rail, mm -hmm. right? Other, if you look at pure vSAN, outside of what you know, obviously is integrated into Evo Rail, but customers who want to run pure vSAN, or customers doing Hyper-V and run on pure Windows storage spaces. Mm -hmm. you, you kinda, we put those into the SDS space. You could call them volume managers within the OS and not SDS, but we put them into I, the I SDS space. I wouldn't call space. them SDS, so yeah, I mean. So we, I mean, we put those into an SDS umbrella, if you will. I'd say that like when people throw the term cloud around, it could mean anything. But when you take the term SDS and SDN and such like that, it's pretty clearly defined as to what value they have as the software-defined element of it. Because some things are a manual infrastructure element. A hyper-converged strategy does not equal SDS, but SD and SDS definitely does not equal a hyper-converged strategy. They are, but there are sometimes are in the case of sure. Evil Rail where it is a hyper-converged model that actually has SDS as an element of it. True, it, and that's it, why we broke required. it down in those two camps. Okay, we I just have, wanted we... to distinguish that because sure. the slide makes it seem like all this is an SDS and hyper-converged, and that's wrong. It's clearly very wrong. It, in a, in a, it, it, the intention was to show you essentially the portfolio of Dell includes what Dell has for IP and sure. what we're doing with partnerships. So, okay. so you're defining software-defined storage in this as software that can run on Dell hardware and present itself as storage, which is not a 
traditional array that is hardware and software that has to go together. Because all of the software can, could run on HP, can run on sure. any other kind of thing. It's just software that presents storage. It won't work in it's HP. not SDN, but... <laughs> It if you look at it from that perspective, yeah. sure, yeah, essentially, yes. I mean, you can run storage spaces on a large number of stuff, you're right, and then we do some stuff yeah. to make sure that our stuff works well with their stuff. Stuff. Mm -hmm. oh, a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry? What have you added or, or um, just some stuff? Storage spaces? Stuff works. So, so we, we have, we, we've done some stuff with, um, I like to turn stuff again. Uh, we've done some things with uh, Microsoft. So, so, for example, the ability to, um, monitor power supply health and hard, hard drive health and those types of things. You know, so think of it as enclosure services that typically the storage array controllers would be doing. You know, okay, so it, you're, you're, some of that functionality. Your array presents itself. You've got this SIM classes and everything, PowerShell, integration, all that. Is that what you're saying? Well, different than the array, because that would be at the rail. This is thim so think of spaces. Usually it's a, a server, right? with JBODs behind it. So, so and the JBODs themselves have a management functionality, right, enclosure services. So, so it's integrating a little bit of that enclosure services into, into that stack. So storage spaces itself can, can be aware of a power supply that fails and those types of things. Okay. Now are you going to go into the, uh, the, the storage solutions for a blade infrastructure as well? Or is that a totally different discussion? We weren't, um, but I can, I, I, mean, I can touch on that one if so, you'd like real so fast. Just real quick, so if I'm getting this correct, the, the Equalogic for blades mm -hmm. is an iSCSI only solution. It is, yes. Are you HP in the past that done storage blades where you can do JBODs? Are you guys looking do at that? Not looking at that. Not an option. So, so the the PSM forty one hundred, which is the, the Equalogic within Array, obviously Equalogic and iSCSI only storage solution. So it's going to remain as iSCSI for that particular solution. I think later in this presentation, later in the day, you guys are getting an introduction to some things we're doing on the server side, and you'll see some of those new direct attach, denser server functionality we're bringing in there for storage. Some of it's I'll call it blade related, but when they get to that, you certainly ask that question because they got some really cool stuff there. Yeah, and there's some neat stuff coming out for that. 